Welcome back to Lake Lot Build. My name is John. Today's episode is actually kind of exciting for me. Uh, completely different, a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. So I am going to be installing stainless steel cable for my railing. So let's show you all the components to this. I have it designed in my head, so hopefully I can get in my head into my hands and I'm hoping that this is the very inexpensive but very strong way to do it. Uh, for all of this railing here and all of this railing there, uh, less than $400. I have nine rows, so roughly 1,000 feet of cabling and hardware to go with that for nine rows. So I think that's a pretty good price. So let's go over. The components. I'm going to go over them individually first here, and then I'll show you where they need to get, where I'll be installing them. So, first up is going to be what's called an eye bolt. So, in my, uh, in my, into my columns there. If you remember, I have it all. I've learned how to tap it, and that is my threaded connection. And then this one is called a thimble. The thimble is what fits through there and then so the cable comes in and goes around it and so that the cable doesn't chafe against that. This is called a turnbuckle, pretty simple. And then this is, I would call it a clamp. So these are all stainless steel, stainless steel, stainless steel. And I went with the zinc plated on this one, the stainless steel eye bolts. They were really, really expensive. And I'm going to try to see how these age. So if they start to rust really bad, I'll just take them out and, and then put in the uh, stainless steel ones. But for now, that's what I'm going to use. So let's now show you how this is going to go together. Okay, so here is going to be the end of my run. So the cable is going to come in here, pinch, and we're going to have the clamp right there. And then next, the cable will come down and over to here. Let's go down this way. And the cable will come in on this end. And it'll hook just like that. And then, of course, you can turn this and tighten it up. It's a very simple, uh, but I think very effective way to do it. So I'm gonna have a turnbuckle in this corner in that corner down there, and then over in that one, in that corner over there, so that I'm not pulling in a right angle. All of the pulls are just straight. So, we'll see. So let's go take a look at the cable now. So the cable, here's a thousand feet. I chose the one inch, one inch, one eighth inch cable that is stainless steel. It's on a roll. This little guy I made for my Romex. And so I was done using it. So I thought I'd put it on there. That way I can pull it just like that. And uh, we'll pull it through here. And uh, I'll see how that goes. So I need to have my cables. Of course, they're going to come out this way. And so my thought is I'm going to start with an eyelet like that. So if you can think of it, it's going to be in there like that. I can't have anything on this side of it um, because it's going to be too close to my house. And I need, I need to do the same thing upstairs, but I have that landing mat on the back of it. So I can't get a wrench back there. So my thought is, is I will drill and then I will tap like that so then that can thread into it so this will be a threaded connection like that i've never done a tap and die set so i have no idea if this is going to work or not but i went to my little ace hardware store just up the road and i'm telling you guys it's not a plug for ace hardware but this family owned little ace hardware this guy knew everything about it and so we figured out for a quarter inch eyelet that has a 20 in, or 20 thread which is this guy let's see if we can 
zoom up on it. It says 20 NC, quarter inch 20 NC. Now the 20 is the amount of threads per inch. And if you can see, they line up like that. So that's the correct thread for it. Now, for this little guy, it tells you that I needed a 1364 bit that will take the hole out big enough, but leave enough for these threads to get tapped into the steel. So I am set up. I'm going to mark my pipe. We're going to drill it and try to tap. And uh, we'll see if this is a colossal mess up or if this actually is going to work. Okay, I drilled my holes with my drill press. That's that 1364 inch bit. So here are the holes drilled. What I did was I had this little level and so I marked them so that each time I do this, there's the same spacing on all the holes each time. So when you put them up here, you can see how they line up. All right, here we go. I think I watched enough automotive shows to, to be really dangerous here. So I know that we can't, you don't want to waller it. So let's see how we do. Oh, I think it's working. I think the deeper that I go. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Dude, we might be onto something here. There it is. Look at that. Okay, so let's try it. Oh my god, this is gonna be cool. This might work. Oh my gosh, they're perfect threads too. Okay, so let's see. Let me get this thing taken off here. All right, so if I put that in there like that. Oh my god. Dude, I think it's gonna work. So my thought is, is it'll be just like that and then I'll hook my turnbuckle on right here with my cable and then that way there's nothing on the back side of it. And that, my friend, is pretty cheap. She's all welded up. Everything's been, all my Hilti fasteners are in. And uh, it looks really good. And then this is where I was telling you about the where I've tapped in my pieces so I have all the all the hardware has been ordered and so it'll go like that my turnbuckle will go on that I can tighten it up there and then on this end I have it threaded for this angle and then this angle as well and I'll put my other turnbuckle here so my cable doesn't come in and make the loop and come back out because I was afraid that it was going to pull too tight in that kind of weird 90 degree angle right there so I have the threaded and thread it here. I have the first one completed. It took me a little longer than I anticipated. Um, so I'm gonna have to probably try to develop some sort of technique here of how I'm going to do that. But let's, uh, let's show you what I've worked on here. Here I made my connection. There's my thimble that's inside there. The cable runs down here. And then I have the same connection there. And then my turnbuckle here, and then I made that connection there. So I ran this out a little almost to the end, uh, left me about a quarter of an inch, pulled that, and then rotated that. And uh, yeah, she's tight, almost like a like a guitar string. To work. So I'm working on the second one, and I go back and look at this one. And I'm like, ah, oh, that cable is a little bit uh, out of not square so I kind of twist it and then tried to unravel on me and so I'm like ah oh. so that's it I've seen a lot of the cable systems that have a double clamp on it and I thought well maybe at first I thought well that was just the reason was is that it's pulling so tight but it also helps this cable stay nice and true one on top of the other one and not try to twist to the side and that's what it did so when I did the double on it of course it works just fine
Okay, got the uh, railing and the wire pieces are here are done. So, sorry the wind started blowing, so sorry if I get some interference there. Looks good. So, let's say, let's take a turnbuckle and we need to expand them out. But if you do this, and it takes forever to do it. So I figured out, if you take this part, one of the eye, eye bolts, and stick it on this end, it works really well. So you can do all the ends of those, like that. And then let's say I get through all of those, now I need to do the other end. So what I did was I just took that part, the hook part, out of one of them. I stuck it in here. Now, this one is a reverse thread, so you're going to have to go the other way. Like that. So, if you had one or two of uh, these turnbuckles, it's not a big deal, but doing nine of them on each run. Well, I think it turned out beautiful. So we have all the way around now. So we got there to there, over to there, and over to there. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. And so far, everything looks good. Everything is staying nice and tight. And um, yeah, no complaints about it. And I really think it looks good. It looks really good. I like this, um, almost like a more mechanical look, a very industrial, more mechanical. You can see all the turnbuckles and the, and the clamps and everything like that. So that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching and make sure and like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for our next few episodes. Talk to you soon. Bye.